the specter of violence, particularly against the defenseless in Nigeria, took a whole new turn last Friday when terrorists on motorcycles invaded a boys' secondary school in Kankara, Katsina State, and abducted hundreds of students, coming barely three weeks after Boko Haram claimed responsibility for beheading 67 farmers in Borno State in the Northeast. What manner of danger does this trend of events portend for the security of lives and property in Nigeria simply cannot be overemphasized? Joining us now to try and situate exactly where Nigeria is headed, if, not, if this worrying trend is not checked, is Dr. Obadiah Melafia, a former deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, former presidential aspirant, and a security enthusiast whose views on the worsening state of insecurity in Nigeria have been public knowledge over the years. Welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you so much for having me. Um, and uh, it's curious that you describe me as um, as a security enthusiast. Well, I'm a humble development economist, and I know that without security, without peace and harmony, there can be no progress, there can be no development. So it is from that point of view that um, you could call me uh, a security enthusiast. Uh, because development, economic growth, peace, security are deeply intertwined uh, and they go together. Well, uh, that's why I am interested in it. Well, Dr. Milafia, thank you for that clarification and it's good to see you. But thank we you. know, of course, that uh, you are an intellectual, so <laughs> you are involved in <laughs> almost everything uh, in public affairs. But very quickly, what's your take on what is going on in Katsina State? Two days before the president arrived, there were killings, there were abductions. Uh, the president arrived within 24 hours, school children, you know, young, innocent uh, secondary school students were kidnapped. Up to this moment, we don't know the exact number of persons that are missing or the ones that have been uh, rescued. Uh, just uh, 24 hours later, there was another attack also in uh, Katsina State, as is the case, as has been the case in different parts of the uh, country. What can we do to make our schools safe? Thank you so much, Ruben. Um, you know, I grew up partly in Dora. My uncle worked in the General Hospital in Dora when I was a secondary school boy, so I used to spend a lot of my holidays with him. So I can claim in many ways to be a Daura boy myself. So Daura Katsena, you know, it's like Lagos Ukun, you know, they are, they are very close. Uh, um, so uh, I feel it uh, deeply and uh, I'm very concerned about what has happened. Uh, it is very worrisome. It is curious uh, that the abductions that took place in Chibok were at a girls' science secondary school. Uh, and, uh, and this time around, in, uh, in, in, um, in, in, uh, it's in, in Katsena, in Kankara, uh, it is also a boys' science secondary school. So I'm just curious why the target on, on science schools, what do they have against science schools uh, in particular? So I'm deeply very concerned about it. I'm deeply worried. Uh, uh, it's obvious that we have to do much more to stem the tide of these problems. Uh, there needs to be more security in the schools. But, you know, the police, the army are overstretched. I understand there was a police security guard there with arms, but they simply came and, you know, they would come in their, in their dozens and then shove them aside and, uh, you know, move in. So, but I think we have to beef up more security uh, and ensure that, um, you know, action uh, is taken to protect our young people. Uh, my heart goes to the parents uh, who must be going through a traumatizing and agonizing time. Uh, but, you know, we should continue to keep hope alive. And, uh, you know, and I urge 
uh, the security services uh, to do everything they can. We've heard some reassuring noises from the army saying that they have zeroed down on the exact location of the, the bandits and where the children are being held. Uh, but we pray for great wisdom and, and, and tact to be able to get those young people alive. Uh, this is my ardent prayer and my hope. I'm sure most of us join you in that prayer. Now, at the risk of sounding pedantic, is there a difference in practical terms between bandits and terrorism in this particular situation? Because you'll recall that last month, the governor of Zamfara State, Governor Matawali, was able to negotiate the release of 26 little girls, schoolgirls, from the ages of eight to 12. He had them released and 12 others. Is that a possibility here? Is that what we're looking at here? Or are we looking at a more intractable situation with an ideological dimension like Boko Haram's abduction of the Chibok girls? Well, they are all interlinked, believe you me. They are all interlinked. Um, uh, we know the history of Boko, Boko Haram. We know the, histor the story of Muhammad Yusuf, who started off like a local thug, and then he built up himself to to create this this monstrosity. And uh, the, uh, the 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 um, the uh, the please okay. The, and uh, and the and the, this thing, the sorry, uh, sorry, and the um, the the uh, the bandits are in a similar situation, and they created that that um, situation, uh, and uh, we've approached issues from the point of view of appeasement, that we must appease them constantly, uh, and in fact. Nobody even wants to call them terrorists. So that is part of the problem. Uh, the bandits are the same as the terrorists as far as I'm concerned. And uh, we have decided to use more of appeasement and of course a bit of kinetic energy from time to time. And uh, these are major challenges that we face. And I hope that, you know, in the end there will be some uh, form of um, the settlement of this issue. I don't expect that every negotiation will be discussed in the open. I don't expect that. But a lot of underground work needs to be done, some of, some of it very delicate. There must be enough inducements and there must be enough backup with possibility of the use of force so that they understand that uh, you know there are there are you know there are there are enough incentives as well as disincentives uh, for any course of action uh, that they would want to pursue going forward. Uh, my fundamental uh, point of departure is that all those children must be brought back alive. Want them back alive, back to their parents. Uh, with no harm coming to them. So this is not the time for braggadocio. This is not the time for machismo. This is the time for great restraint and for wisdom to ensure that we bring them back safely. Right. Uh, I, I don't know if you saw our last interview, you know, conducted by Dr. Ruben Abati. Uh, and there's been that talk being banded around recently about uh, the use of uh, private military companies to prosecute this war. We have used them at some point. Um, the contract was terminated. I mean, what's your take on, on this in general? I don't like the word mercenaries. I didn't uh, use the word. All mercenaries. <laughs> exactly. All mercenaries. <laughs> All mercenaries are, are, are generally bad people uh, because even the adjective mercenary 
for somebody to have a mercenary attitude means that they are there only for what they can get. They have no principles, they have no honor, they have no, they have no commitment, and they have nothing at stake except what they want. So even using the word mercenary is not a good word. And anybody who presents himself as a mercenary, I wouldn't touch them with a batch pole whatsoever. Yes, we can talk of security consultants and defense consultants. That is perfectly okay. And uh, we need advice. We need support we can get from, from, from all countries of the world who are well-meaning. Uh, uh, um, so this is my point of departure. I don't know those particular mercenaries that you mentioned or that Ruben mentioned. I don't know their capabilities, uh, but we should talk to governments that have goodwill. Uh, and I don't know why we have not spoken to Russia. Russia under Vladimir Putin has found a rigorous way of dealing with terrorism. And it has worked, it has been very effective. As a matter of fact, Putin does not negotiate with terrorists. Uh, it's tough, it's difficult, uh, but that is his principle. He does not negotiate with them. And uh, I think we should talk to people like that. We should talk to countries like Israel. Uh, they have found ways around these things. We should talk to all countries that are willing to help us. But I also have to say this, that to be very honest with you, I get this impression that this thing that we call banditry or that we call uh, terrorism, that we call insurgency, it is more complex than we imagine. I That's suspect amazing. that there are, you know, sinister world forces also involved. And the aim is to make Nigeria to become a comatose elephant like like uh, like Congo. Well, like we, the hope, Democratic we hope we don't get to that level, uh, Dr. Melasia. Well, but, well, but if you want to destroy a country, this is the easiest way to do it. Infiltrate their rural countryside, scatter their farmers, break the spirit of their peasant farming communities and continue hammering them until there is a food crisis and there's impossible and then you know food shortages and farming and of course before long they will flee into the country the urban centers and uh, with nothing to do it will intensify criminality and violence and before you know it, the country sinks deeper and deeper into a quagmire that it cannot come out of. I have been to the Congo, and uh, it's such a blessed country, probably the most blessed country on earth. Well, let's pray and hope yeah, that we it. don't end up in a quagmire. Uh, Dr. Melafia, so. yes, thank I you very much indeed.